All right, guys, let's have a conversation about U.S. and Chinese relations. The specific aspects that I want to talk about is technology and the military. And so this is going to be like part one, focusing specifically on technology. And then there's going to be a part two right after this focused on the military. The reason why I want to focus on these two aspects is because I feel like it's not really talked about, if ever. Like, I'm pretty sure most people don't know what's going on between the United States military and China. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But most of the time we hear about things like the trade war and that's about it. So let's jump into technology and see what it's about. Now, to better understand this issue, let's focus specifically on like a case study. So let's focus on the Chinese company called Huawei and kind of like what we can learn from that issue at large. Now, the United States government claims that Huawei has been working with the Chinese government in order to steal Americans' information. However, there isn't a lot of evidence that's correlating to. Although, there are a lot of things that are still making us think that this is in fact the case. For example, there are multiple vulnerabilities within the phone that makes it easy to hack, which by the way, hacking Americans' information is definitely a hobby of the Chinese government. In addition to all of this as well, the owner of Huawei worked for the Chinese military. China also gave Huawei over the span of 10 years, $1 billion. Well, actually it's $1.6 billion. So the combination of the fact that the owner worked with the Chinese military at some point in time in his life, I think that was like his roots. And then you have the fact that the Chinese government has given Huawei over the last 10 years, $1.6 billion. And then you add the increased vulnerabilities within the phone. It leads a lot of Americans and people internationally thinking that all of this is very much intentional in order to steal Americans' information. Now, the situation then escalated once the founder of Huawei, Ren Zengfi, which I apologize if I butchered his name, I probably did, his daughter, Meng Wacho, was arrested in Canada at the request of the United States. The United States claims that Meng Wacho had allegedly helped Huawei dodge tariffs that the United States had placed in Iran. In addition to that too, there's a multiple other like random things that we're trying to charge her with, but that's very much unclear. Like for example, attempted wire fraud. But that's like something that's coming out right now, so we will find out what happens. Now up to this point, because of how much of a risk Huawei apparently poses, there's multiple countries that have actually banned Huawei products. For example, number one, obviously the United States. Number two, there's Great Britain. Then you have Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Japan, India, and Italy. So needless to say, it's quite a cluster of a situation. Now let's actually get into intellectual property theft. This is something that's very important because this is hitting American companies really hard. Now, according to executives who are a part of the CNBC Global CFO Council, now I get it, this is a very long and complicated title, especially when there's an acronym literally in the middle, but essentially it's a group of executives across the technological industry, and they manage a collective amount of $5 trillion in market value. Now, they are claiming that one in five companies in the United States have had intellectual property stolen. 70%, so that's 20% of them, 70% simply don't know whether or not their intellectual property has been stolen. That's pretty bad. Now I get it, a lot of people hearing this is gonna say, well, I don't really care about those people anyway because they're ripping off Americans by lying about their taxes and so on and so forth. Yeah, I get it, that's true. However, it is still a fun fact nonetheless. Anyway, so in 2019, at a G20 meeting, which is an international forum for governments and central banks, China issued a memo that set out 38 different punishments for violators, but critics claim that it's not really the fact that they just created all of these rules and regulations, it's the fact that there's a lack of enforcement about the regulations that are currently in place. So a couple of things that China wants to start imposing on their own companies is, number one, they're going to revoke financial support to those companies, and number two, they're going to designate these different companies to an international database that is viewable by foreign leaders. And so for example, say I stole intellectual property and I was an executive, then my information will be put into an international database while foreign leaders will know that they can't work with me specifically. All right, that's a good idea. However, the problem is the fact that these things are not apparently enacted. Now the issue as a whole has cost the United States between 225 billion and $600 billion annually. Damn, <laughs> that's crazy. You know, once I started saying this story out loud, I'm starting to think that China was like the OG bootleggers, right? It's like any product that you want and you don't want to pay market value. I guess that's where all the products are coming from, which is China. Anyway, I thought you guys would find that story to be particularly interesting.